Hi people, this is Miss Lassar. I am going to be uh, teaching you two general topics today. The first is plate tectonics. The second is all things weather and air circulation. And this is kind of a, a long lecture, so I'm going to split it up just right now. I'm deciding I'm splitting it up into two. This first video is about plate tectonics. The second video will be about air circulation. Welcome to plate tectonics. Today's lecture is so cool. Get ready to have your mind blown. Okay, so you've probably learned plate tectonics briefly in the past. Before we can talk about it, we got to look at the structure of the earth, the layers of the earth, and where we are. So this is a uh, little pie that shows us the layers of the earth. We live right here on the very, very, very top skinniest layer, the lithosphere. And so we're on one of the few solid parts of earth. Most of the earth below us is molten rock. Um, so we live right here on the lithosphere, and you can see just by looking at this picture, the lithosphere, this is cooled, solid rock, um, and we can have real skinny parts of the lithosphere right here that are covered in water. Those would be our oceans, but there is still solid rock underneath them. And then here are chunkier, thicker layers of the lithosphere. This is our continents. This is where we live. The mantle underneath this is a slowly flowing combination of liquid and solid rock. What we think of as magma uh, that comes out of a volcano that's found right here in the asthenosphere. So our mantle has multiple layers. We care most about the asthenosphere because the movement of this liquid rock magma in the asthenosphere is what drives all of the plate tectonics that we're going to talk about now. Okay, so when we're looking at plate tectonics, we got to know what a plate is and we got to look at the interactions between plates. Let me go back, actually. Um, I want you to picture the surface of the earth like a soccer ball. And like a soccer ball, the surface of the earth is divided into little sections. They're not in perfect hexagons and pentagons, but they're in chunks. And unlike a soccer ball, those sections are not stitched together. They're just kind of pressing up against each other. And they're also moving. They're constantly moving back and forth and hitting each other and passing each other. Um, and all of that movement, that's plate tectonics. The individual sections of lithosphere floating on top of this liquid asthenosphere, those are our tectonic plates. So we got to look at uh, the interactions between plates and we typically zoom in and we look at interactions between two plates right next to each other at the plate boundaries. Plate boundaries are defined based on the direction that the two plates are moving in relation to each other. So here, if our two plates are moving apart from each other, we see a divergent plate boundary. If our two plates are moving towards each other, this is a convergent plate boundary. And if our two plates are slipping past each other, not colliding and not moving apart, they're just slipping past each other, that is called a transform plate boundary. And the details of each plate boundary are important because they're going to dictate what we see on Earth and what we feel and experience on Earth. So we're going to go through each of these plate boundaries in order. Uh, ooh, real important. The plates that we're looking at, they could be of oceanic crust or they could be continental crust. Let me show you what I mean by that and also how they move. All right, so here's our lithosphere on top of our asthenosphere. Remember the asthenosphere is this like molten rock. And <clears throat> our lithosphere, this cooled solid rock on top of it can either be this skinny section covered in ocean, that would be our oceanic crust, or our thicker section of lithosphere where the crust peaks up above the water and is dry land, that would be our continental crust. And just take a look at this picture. You can see here's one full tectonic plate. Uh, you can see two plate boundaries. Here's one plate boundary between oceanic crust and oceanic crust. Here's another plate boundary between oceanic crust and again oceanic crust, but it looks like we might be hitting some continental crust over here soon. And the reason these plates are moving is because of the asthenosphere. So we've got our molten rock, and here's a really important theme for today. The theme is hot things rise, cool things fall. You're familiar with this concept. And so what we're caring about here is our molten rock, which is hotter, closer to the center of the earth. It's a super hot rock down here. That hot molten rock, that magma, is going to rise because hot things rise. And as it cools, because it's moving closer to the cool surface for further from the hot core, that magma will cool and so it will fall. 
it'll get hot, it'll rise again, cool and fall, hot again, rise, cool and fall. And this creates what's called a convection current. And that convection current is what actually pushes the tectonic plates on the surface of the earth. So we can tell which direction our convection current is flowing based on the direction that the plate is moving. It's these under the crust asthenosphere flows that determine the direction that each plate is moving. Okay, so now let's take a look at each of our plate boundaries. And we're gonna start with our divergent plate boundaries. So remember divergent plate boundary, we've got two plates moving apart. And in this case, uh, it's not so important which type of plates we have moving apart. The impacts are gonna be pretty similar no matter what type of plates are moving apart. So because our plates are moving apart, they're exposing <clears throat> the liquid magma, the asthenosphere in between them. And so that magma is hot, hot things rise. And so magma will rise to fill the gap between the plates. Because of that rising magma, um, that rising magma will actually kind of force the plates upward a little bit and we'll get a rift um, and a low volcanic ridge forming between the two plates. So we have a rift valley uh, in the space where the two plates are separating from each other. But we also have a little low volcanic ridge because that rising magma bubbles up, uh, flops over and forms a little mound, a little more magma bubbles up, flops over, forms an even bigger mound, and eventually we get a little bit of a volcanic ridge forming between the two plates. Uh, divergent boundaries are associated with earthquakes. Uh, anytime we've got plates moving, we're gonna see earthquakes. They're associated with rift valleys. Take a look at the subtle rift valley in between these two plates. I'll show you some more significant ones in a sec. Volcanoes. So these are small volcanoes. Um, we see, when, when we say volcanoes, we mean magma bubbling up to the surface of the earth. They can be an underwater volcano or they can be an above the ground volcano. It's all a volcano. But when we've got magma coming up to the surface of the lithosphere, that's a volcano. So this is not like what you think of when you think of a volcano because we've got kind of this consistent bubbling of magma all the way along this uh, plate boundary, but that still counts as a volcano. And we see low volcanic mountains. Uh, we'll see higher volcanic mountains in a different type of plate boundary. Okay, so here are some important uh, divergent plate boundaries. The first one is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Here's the, the Earth. Locate yourself. Here's North America, South America, Europe, Africa. And we have a plate boundary right here. These white lines are actually showing the plate boundaries. So you can see all the tectonic plate boundaries on earth right now. You're also seeing little arrows showing you which direction each plate is moving. And right splitting the center of the Atlantic Ocean all the way from the top to the bottom, there's a pretty complex plate boundary uh, that is consistently divergent all the way down. This is called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And again, remember the ridge we're seeing is a low ridge, low volcanic mountains. This is an oceanic, oceanic divergent boundary because we have oceanic crust on both sides of it. Um, and it's associated with seafloor spreading. You can kind of picture what's going to be happening here as the two sides of the Atlantic Ocean are pushing out and pushing out. We would anticipate that over the next millions of years, we would see a larger Atlantic Ocean. It is spreading apart. This is also um, why we even have the Atlantic Ocean. Remember that at one point, this area of North America and South America and Europe and Africa, they were all touching and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge kind of pushed all of those continents apart. Here's another important divergent plate boundary. This one's in Africa. This is called the Great African Rift Valley. I wonder if I can turn off my video so you can see. There we go. So you can see the Rift Valley more clearly. This is a continental continental divergent boundary. So we've got sort of two plates here. We've got the African plate moving this way. Um, and this is actually still part of the African plate, but it's attached to the Indian plate. And the movement of the Indian plate is kind of pulling it over. And so we're probably going to see that this African plate split into two smaller plates. And this is our divergent boundary right in between the point where those two plates are moving apart. And in that rift valley, uh, we see what we would expect. We see volcanoes, low volcanoes. We also see some giant lakes. The largest lakes in Africa are all formed in this rift valley. And that kind of makes sense. We see um, big chasms in the rift valley and water can collect in those chasms and form some of our largest lakes. 
Here's another divergent plate boundary. And this one's associated with what you saw before the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This is Iceland. So Iceland is a landmass that formed on top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge because magma that was upwelling from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge collected in such large volumes that it built up into a landmass, and that landmass is Iceland. But it also means that Iceland is being pulled apart. You can think of it as being pulled apart, or you can think of it as growing wider. The North American plate is moving this way, the Eurasian plate is moving this way, and in that rift, we see volcanoes, a ton of volcanic activity, um, and we see actually some pretty visible movement of our plates, like here in this visible rift. Okay, the next type of plate boundary we're going to talk about is our convergent plate boundary. And this is definitely the most complex one, because this one uh, depends depends heavily on what two types of plates are colliding. So there's a key thing you need to remember here. When two plates are colliding, the denser plate slides under the less dense plate. So take a look at what I mean by that. Here I see two plates colliding. This is clearly the denser plate because whoop, I see it sliding under this one, which is the less dense plate. And there's going to be a bunch of impacts from that, both literally and figuratively. Okay, so our first type of convergent plate boundary, two plates moving together, is our continental oceanic collision, which means we've got continental plate over here colliding with oceanic crust over here. And in this case, the oceanic crust, because it's waterlogged, is always going to be denser, and so it will be subducted below the continental crust. And new turn, Subduction, uh, subduction zone and subducted. This means moves underneath. Uh, the zone where the denser plate moves underneath the less dense plate, that's called the subduction zone. You can see it right here. So what I want you to notice about the subduction zone is a couple of things. First of all, at this point of collision, uh, it's a subtle on this picture. It's a little more pronounced on this one. The point of our subduction zone, there's a giant trench that's created. And that's literally the boundary, the physical boundary between the two plates. Um, that trench we see on Earth, this is where our deepest ocean trenches are formed. The other thing that you want to notice is when our oceanic crust gets subducted below our continental crust, uh, it gets hot. It gets really hot because it's being forced closer to the center of the Earth. Eventually it gets so hot that some of this crust melts and we know hot things rise. So that melting crust bubbles on up, bubbles right through the continental crust and forms a volcano right here on the continental crust. So our oceanic crust is subducted below our continental crust. Um, and in our continental oceanic collision, we get a deep trench formed. We get volcanic mountains that are formed on the continental plate. So specifically the continental plate. We get earthquakes. It's a plate boundary. We always see earthquakes. And now the other thing is that our plate boundary is occurring out here in the ocean. And so we're going to see tsunamis. When our earthquakes occur uh, underwater, they're going to displace a bunch of water. And that water has to go somewhere. It'll form a giant wave, crash towards land, and that's our tsunami or tidal wave. Our second type of convergent plate boundary is a continental-continental collision. So you've got two continental plates converging together. Uh, and here, there's typically no subduction zone or very little subduction zone. Um, subduction zones take a, a very long time geologically to form in a continental-continental collision because both plates are so um, not dense. They're pretty buoyant. They stay high up. And instead, what happens see if I can turn on my video. Okay, if you look at my hands, my two hands are the continental plates. They hit each other and they just kind of push each other upwards. And so these continental continental plates are where we see uh, by far our highest mountains. The highest mountains on earth are typically formed at continental continental collision areas. We don't have volcanoes. Uh, no subduction zone means no rock is being melted, and so we're probably not going to have a volcano. We do see earthquakes. It's a plate boundary, uh, and that's our continental continental convergent boundary. Our last type of boundary are the oceanic oceanic boundaries, uh, convergent boundaries, and here our heavier plate will be the one that's subducted, and we don't know which one it is. Here in this picture it appears to be the left one because it's being subducted down. It's not immediately obvious which one is the denser one. Um, 
when our heavier plate is subducted down, this will form a volcanic island arc. So imagine this left crust is being subducted down. It's getting super, super hot. That hot crust is melting, turning into magma, bubbling up because hot things rise, bubbles up through the ocean floor, and eventually um, bubbles up so high that it'll form an island arc. That magma will cool into rock and we'll see our island arc forming in the middle of the ocean. We also see a deep trench form. Same as before, our two plates colliding and one subducting under the other. We get this little V shape here that is an ocean trench. We see earthquakes and we see tsunamis because our earthquakes are happening underwater. Let me show you some real important convergent boundaries. Uh, here's the first one. This is an oceanic continental convergent boundaries, and this forms the Andes Mountains. So right here, we've got the Nazca plate moving eastward, South American plate moving westward, and the Nazca plate is oceanic, so it's being subducted underneath, melting, bubbling up, and that bubbling up magma is currently forming the Andes Mountains, which are, as you would expect, a volcanic mountain range. Here's a continental, continental convergent boundary. This formed the Himalayas. So we've got the Eurasian plate smashing into the Indian plate. Uh, and eventually the Indian plate looks like it's going to be maybe subducted underneath the Eurasian plate. That hasn't happened yet, so we don't have any volcanoes forming yet. But what we do have are huge amounts of crust smashing into each other and crumpling up. And that forms our highest Himalayan mountains, including Mount Everest. And here is an oceanic oceanic uh, convergent boundary. We've got, uh, ooh, I have to check. We've got two plates colliding here. I think we've got the Eurasian plate and the Pacific plate colliding here. And they collide right along this line. You can see what's being formed here. That is a deep ocean trench. And that is the Marianas Trench, uh, along with the Marianas Islands. It's a volcanic island arc that's formed right here because of that subduction zone. And the Marianas Trench is the deepest ocean point on Earth. Our deepest points in the ocean are formed at our subduction zones. Okay, so I'd like to fi uh, finish by talking about transform plate boundaries. And these are by far the simplest plate boundaries. These are plate boundaries where one plate is just slipping past another. They're not colliding. They're not moving apart. They're just slipping past each other. Um, and because of that, we don't have any subduction zones. No rock is being pushed down. No magma is being exposed. So we see no volcanic activity. We also do see earthquakes because plates are moving. We see earthquakes when plates move. And uh, by far the most famous example of a transform boundary and one of the largest transform boundaries on earth is the San Andreas Fault that stretches all the way down from Southern California, kind of almost up to Northern California. And the, the San Andreas Fault is formed by the North American plate moving towards the southeast the pacific plate is moving towards the northwest so these two plates are slipping past each other um, and you can see the very long san andreas fault from uh outer space here you can see the san andreas fault stretching along southern california Okay, so what's really important is that you kind of have a mental map of both what the surface of the Earth looks like and also the physical locations of some of these really important plate boundaries. For example, we've got the San Andreas Fault right here at the edge of the North American and Pacific Plate. Um, we've got the Andes Mountains forming right here where the Nazca Plate and the South American Plate are colliding. We've got the Mid-Atlantic Ridge stretching ooh, all the way down all the way down. All of these plates are diverging from each other. So this is a huge divergent boundary. Um, we've got our African plate moving apart from our Indian plate. Remember we said that we think we're probably going to see a plate split here because this is where our great African rift valley is. We see this kind of chunk of the African plate also moving away. Um, towards where the Indian plate is going. And we see our Himalayas forming right here where the Eurasian plate and the Indian plate are smashing into each other. So just have that mental map. Feel free to make a physical map so that you start remembering where these locations are on Earth. 
Okay, and a couple last things. The Pacific Ring of Fire is something you may have heard of. This is home to the vast majority of active volcanoes and the site of the most earthquakes and tsunamis. And so let me outline the Pacific Ring of Fire for you. It starts here, goes all the way up over and down. And it outlines most of the Pacific plate, and then it kind of stretches across the coast of North and South America. And all of these boundaries that are highlighted, these are mostly convergent boundaries. And we know that our convergent boundaries are really where we see some pretty significant volcanic activity. So this Pacific Ring of Fire is where the vast majority of active volcanoes are. Volcanoes convergent boundaries. We do see volcanic activity at divergent boundaries, but it's like so subtle compared to the massive volcanoes we see at convergent boundaries. Really, it's our convergent boundaries that we think of when we're thinking about um, volcanoes on Earth. And so this makes sense to us. We see convergent plate boundaries all along here where we see those convergent plate boundaries. We see massive volcanoes, a lot of earthquakes and tsunamis. And that is the end of our plate tectonics lecture. Uh, now go on over to the air circulation lecture. See you later, people.